Hi friends, welcome back uh, to the what is STLC course. Uh, this is the third section. In this third section, we talk about design phase. Okay, the goal of the design phase is to develop software architecture or design based on the approved functional and non-functional requirements. We'll go back to the previous uh, phase, that is the requirement phase. You can see here the uh, deliverables are reviewed and approved requirements. So, in the second phase, these those requirements will become the input for this phase. Okay. Who are involved in this design phase? Generally, in my experience, lead developers and architect are involved in the design phase. Okay. And what is the process? How do the requirements, functional and non-functional requirements, these two or more than two depends on the scope of the application small medium large as we discussed before are going to convert the functional non-functional requirements to the design or architecture high level architecture or high level design see uh, I have more than 10 years experience when I started you know no, we used to have high level document high level design documents low level design documents there used to be lots of design documents people used to take these requirements and spend a lot of time in this design phase to come up with the, the uh, design but now mm, the uh, design phase they they are doing you know they, there are different methodologies that uh, you know mm, in the software industry uh, are being uh, uh, fo uh, followed or evolved when um, in the uh, waterfall model is one of the models it goes through all these phases software development life cycle all these uh, SDLC phases but uh, it goes through one phase at a time okay assume that in the requirements in the previous phase the business and list of um, documents all this inf uh, information in the requirements and if it is approved after approval it goes to the design phase when these people are designing if there is a change in the requirement that was not that much agile during the olden days in the waterfall model but in the agile methodology there will be less design documentation and more to show the actual functionality it means more to implement the functionality so uh, if we put that uh, methodologies uh, aside and just focus on what exactly design phase is design phase is it's a more of taking this functional and functional requirements and have the design discussions with the um, lead uh, developers and the architect uh, you, you can see you know here in the requirement phase the persons who are involved are different than the persons who are involved in the design phase these people will have a lot of discussion discussions about the design they come up with designs based on some architecture references there are some standard architecture patterns okay based on the architectural patterns and references what this requirements want to do based on that they will design the application there are some design patterns also some anti-design patterns also a design pattern is nothing but uh, um, a solution to a uh, common recurring problem don't throw away by these uh, terms no these are just uh, thing that these are the uh, you know information software uh, development terms as you can see if you are a beginner don't worry the you will not be involved in this phase this will be generally done by performed by the senior people in your uh, organization or in your team so if you are a beginner don't throw or uh, throw or throw away by this um, in terms you you are going to use a tweet or you will understand more uh, probably in few years you will become a lead developer and architect also so for now if you are a beginner just uh, you know think that this is a way to design the application okay and how the design is uh, being performed this design mm, will be performed broadly based on the functional and non-functional requirements okay and also referring to the this is where the experience of the developer uh, IT experience comes into the picture their old experiences their knowledge on the architectures their knowledge on the design patterns based on that they take that functional non-functional requirements and come up with a design okay what are the deliverables generally 
if we take our go back to our banking example uh, username password validation showing the account details in this uh, database design is for that use case for that uh, for our requirement banking requirement first they can design the database okay design the database let us take the a user table this is where database design principles will come into picture okay there is a some knowledge or uh, knowledge is required to design the database based on functional and uh, non-functional requirements there is uh, this itself is a uh, different course uh, you know we'll talk about that later but uh, as uh, you can see in this design phase deliverables will be database design uh, means physical database designs there are uh, broadly three kinds of database designs one is a conceptual database design second one is logical database design and third one is the physical database design so based on what kind of database they are using okay and don't throw away um, uh, by uh, these words you know uh, you are going to learn i'm going to teach you all those things and uh, just for the for this uh, course just think that this is a black box this is another uh, black box is another term that is used uh, you know in, uh, in the software like in aeroplane there is a black box similar kind of functionality you can think for you if we don't know anything about uh, some terminology think that there is a black box what is there in the black box you know once uh, we retrieve and dig into it uh, then only we know about that information like that if you don't know about it just ignore it think that okay database design is a document think that way then that makes us uh, makes you very easy to move on and focus on our uh, actual course rather than digging into the details the one of the beautiful things uh, being a software engineer or working in the software is there are so many up terms that we don't know if you want to succeed in this software industry if you don't know you should be able to just let it go and think that that's a back black box and uh, when you find time when uh, there is uh, enough material or when you go to the role that roles you will slowly get into that uh, you know know the details and you will you will explore more but for uh, this session for this course let us think that this is a database design is a document and integration or api or endpoint design integration is also uh, the way we think uh, think of we can think about it is in our banking example integration is okay what happens if a person is having a gmail and uh, username and password using gmail uh, uh, gmail credentials if they allow to log into the bank instead of going to the bank web page and entering the username and password if they have if there is a button called gmail or google login what happens if the uh, user clicks on that button if already the user logged into the google they can seamlessly go and see their uh, bank account details without entering the bank specific username and password that is an integration do you like it personally i don't like it for now i don't know how the future is going to be because this it industry is so much changing but personally now i don't want my google directly go into my bank account but that is an integration your bank will be chase or icica or something and if it is having an integration point and agreement these corporations have the agreement with each other then very well they can allow that integrate uh, you know uh, using google credentials users can log in that is an integration okay that is the integration design for that different set of rules or uh, design patterns or uh, architectural patterns will be there so uh, based on that that uh, integration uh, e is possible or not uh, we will decide okay but this if this kind of functionality is required it has to be mentioned in the functional and non functional requirements if the functional and non functional requirements uh, that are, are reviewed and approved or not having any integration then you know we should not be doing that 
okay that is one of the that is called scope the scope of this requirements of this application is uh, assume that for our case in this banking application we don't want any integration with google so if it is not there in the design they should not be discussing about this they will not be discussing about it okay so one of the important things when uh, designing uh, an application or a software is we have to always make sure that functional and non-functional requirements are there if the requirements are not there we should not be trying to design a solution or a software to address those things okay that is called scope a lot of times people because it is some some developer some architect feels like that is cool if they design and uh, if there is any uh, hack in the google and uh, if we allow that uh, though they are not uh, in the functional non-functional requirements which are approved then we are going to get into all uh, different set of problems so make sure that whatever we are designing we are according to non-functional functional requirements okay and uh, let's move on and application design application design is what kind of language that needs to be used uh, programming language software programming language to be used to design this application to write this application what are the databases what uh, what kind of database can be used like that infrastructure design infrastructure design means uh, what is the configuration of the server that is required that is required to provide the functional and non-functional requirement assume that uh, i worked in some applications where the ram itself is two terabytes just to do uh, a small username password for our uh, uh, bank application is it required two terabytes may not be right based on the number of users if the number of users uh, i say that for my banking application 10 users and response time is one second or response time is 10 seconds 10 users 10 seconds and availability is five days my bank will not work on the weekends then for that do i need two terabytes in infrastructure no so how do we size the infrastructure that is also uh, comes out of uh, experience you, you know the in architect or the uh, lead architect predominantly infrastructure architect will be knowing that information so based on that they will size okay so for now for this discussion think that this is also a another deliverable or uh, other thing that is going to be taken care by your architect okay so the predominantly for this design phase is very important because uh, it touches a lot of uh, software uh, uh, principles like a database uh, integrations application infrastructure and as uh, in every step we whatever the design that they come up with like database design integration design application infrastructure design these things need to be all these designs need to be reviewed by this lead developer and uh, arch architect and lead developer they need to agree on that and if possible there can be other external review also with uh, other um, if they have any architecture group other uh, teams can also review just to make sure you know they are based on the requirements they are designing this application so the goal of this phase is to develop the design and the deliverables are all these designs and uh, reviewed and approved designs okay thank you for watching see you in my next video